Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Garavalo from ZK Research, and I'm here at the Worldwide Technology Stand inside the World of Solutions at Cisco Live 2025 in San Diego. Boy, that was a long intro. It's a long uh, intro, yeah. yeah wow. I mean, I'm here with a couple of ZCast regulars, Joe Berger from Worldwide Technology and Yvonne Wintersteiger. Uh, how are you guys doing? Hey, we're not in Vegas, so I'm doing great <laughs> right now. Yeah. We can actually walk outside at Cisco Live for once, so this yeah. is fantastic. Don't you miss the fake inside? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is great. Yeah, it's been a great week. So this has been, uh, uh, for reasons outside of San Diego, it's been a great week. I mean, the uh, they, G2 kind of joked about it on stage that this is the biggest, most consequential. Well, he's quite serious, actually. Uh, Cisco Live in 10 years, but the payload of innovation here it was, it was massive. The amount of announcements yesterday at that keynote, yeah. like you almost had to write it down, like what, what was the last one he just referenced to go on to the next one? I think there's 24 on the product side and then this is Was there really products. that many? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot. He covered a ton. Yeah, and so G2 Patel, their chief product officer now, has been in the role about uh, 10 and a half months. Yeah, the new role, yeah. Yeah, and how do you feel that's working? It certainly seems like they've amped up the... I'll tell you what, I mean, G2 has this philosophy of combining the business units to have this one Cisco philosophy. And we've noticed that for years, every BU kind of had their own strategy and their own go-to-markets. He really has done a fantastic job of bringing everyone together. The, the products are coming together, and I think the go-to-markets are coming together, too. I think that's a big piece, too. It's one thing to have the product's finally integrated, yeah. but it's also making sure the field can actually execute on that too, and I think it's finally starting to happen. We're excited. Yeah, well, even within the BUs, the products were separate, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's even more important now, especially with the Splunk purchase, uh, to actually have that unification, because otherwise it's going to be difficult for anybody to uh, understand fully the bigger picture of that. Yeah, and I want to touch on Splunk, but uh, I want to talk more about setting the table here. Um, you know, if there was a theme to the event, obviously a theme to every event now is AI, but it, this was a bit of a double-sided coin, right? There, so there's all the innovation Cisco had to make AI work, but there's also how they're using AI to develop products faster, and I thought they did a good job of highlighting both, right? So. Yeah, and it is great to see people actually talk about how they're using not just trying to sell it. So I think that is great to see, hey, it's actually helping them develop even faster now. Yeah. Yeah, I know we're going through a lot of those uh, similar type of internal use cases too around how are we using AI to accelerate our business. And what are your customers telling AI? Because I get, when I talk to customers, there's a tremendous amount of excitement and interest, but when I get into deployments, where most customers are sort of figure out what to do with it, right? I think, I think it kind of runs a spectrum on the customer. Uh, I mean, in our segment where we're covering large enterprises, service providers, the federal government, now we're in the mid-market space with our soft choice acquisition, like we're seeing a little bit of everything. I think some of the large organizations, they've been doing some of these things for a couple of years where it's already been accelerated, and some organizations are still, well, what are the use cases they want to go pursue? And we're helping kind of everywhere in between. Um, maybe, it's keeping us busy. Maybe to uh, kind of focus a little bit on the area, I think what we're seeing, uh, uh, maybe an uptick is um, AI for IT operations. Um, we feel that that is going to be a fairly, I don't want to say easy, uh, but a, a great use case uh, because there's a ROI that can be easily achieved uh, and measured. And so I think as, as companies are struggling with AI investment uh, and trying to figure out how to really make money uh, from it, uh, this is becoming, it's emerging as a, as a great use case for, uh, for AI. And I do think the whole concept now of AI is going to take my job, uh, it's starting to calm down a little. I think people are realizing it's a tool I use, and I've used the analogy, you wouldn't hire an accountant that doesn't know how to use Excel. And just like if you're an IT operations person, you better know how to use AI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, Yvonne, you, you talk about Splunk, and you know, when Cisco bought Splunk, they paid $28 billion for $4 billion revenue. And I think a lot of, I remember talking to some equity analysts, they said, that's not a bad return, right? The, you know, the, it's margin creative. Yeah. And people looked at it just as a, they're bringing revenue in. But they've done a lot of integration with Splunk. And how, how are you seeing Splunk now within the portfolio? Oh, yeah. It's, because, it's emerging really as a center point for a lot of the AI innovation they're doing. Uh, and it's absolutely needed. You know, If you think about AI, what's the basic ingredient that has to be there is data. data. And Splunk is good at data. That's what it has. So I think with actually more than any. Correct, yeah. right. 
So uh, my worry was always that they're not going to integrate that as fully as they, as they are. But I, literally uh, this week, we're seeing a lot of the uh, fruits of the labor they've been doing in the background. Uh, they're integrating ABD, um, which is their previous observability, um, uh, I guess, uh, uh, acquisition with uh, Splunk. They're integrating Thousand Eyes now more with a Splunk. And literally all the portfolio that's underneath, that's in, uh, like Cisco networking, all of it is kind of emerging into the, um, into the Splunk as the centerpiece, right? And then ITSI is really the kind of like the manager of managers, really. That's what's going to be the engine that's going to power that um, AI um, and the correlation. And really, if you look at it from IT operations perspective, um, it will reduce um, uh, resolution time, uh, number of tickets, all that stuff. Eventually, it's going to be so good that it's going to be more like a preventative um, uh, type of a measure. So that's, that's pretty exciting to see. And they also rolled out their Agentic Ops. Right. Uh, and uh, any, any feedback on that, the customer sentiment on that? In, in a sense, really, this is just a term that I was just describing. Uh, that's what that is. So how do we use AI to really streamline IT operations and everything that's included in that? And again, stuff that they're doing with, um, um, uh, with the networking and all the other things, uh, all kind of emerges into the observability and the Splunk uh, area. So this is really what the agentic um, uh, ops is. You know what's funny about that? AI ops as a term has been around for a number of years. I think it actually finally got real AI behind it yeah. to start yes. running it. Like yeah. it actually became real now. Yeah. There's a lot of automation. Yeah, there's a lot of automation yeah. in ML, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. And uh, on that topic then, uh, they roll out a product and they the canvas. They showed a demo of it. Uh, Incredible demo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I think everyone in the audience was kind of like, holy cow, like, it's, yeah. it's real now, yeah. So if you haven't seen the demo, uh, I'm Take sure, look, I, yeah. I think I have one on YouTube, but it yeah. dynamically creates a dashboard for you, right? And so you ask it questions, it shows you the data you want to use, it shows you why the problem happened, and then how to fix it. Yeah. And, and there are... Uh, their approach to the multiplayer model of it, of yeah. I need to pull in other resources for this piece of the workflow. How do I grab them and make sure I can see where they're at, fixing the problem, resolution, and then move on to the next piece of it. I thought that was a pretty interesting way on how they're going to pursue the kind of some of these fixes that they're going after. So this is, this is an interesting shift in Cisco since uh, G2's arrival, uh, is the ability to go multi-vendor. And, uh, you know, I think... Um, the criticisms of Cisco was always they're going to lock you in, and you know there was probably that was probably deserved. Yeah. But now on the security that was side, the old way, 100%. yeah, on the security side, they're working with the third parties. I know on the collaboration side, work with Microsoft time yeah. now Zoom, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's. Um, I don't think they can afford not to do that because if you look at any kind of IT operations, there is more than Cisco in their environment, and if you truly want to emerge as the uh, kind of the center or the main dashboard, I'm going to call it, whatever, um, for the whole observability, you have to be able to get information from everywhere uh, in order to really figure out where the issue is and how to resolve it quicker. Now that they're moving that more down, you know, those one Cisco path, they're bringing more AI, and how does that change the relationship between uh, Cisco and its partners like worldwide? Because you've been like maybe the partner for you know, the better part of a decade. You know what, I think kind of going back to your point that they are working with more vendors now, it actually is good for us because we probably have relationships with all those other vendors and we can do more of putting it all together for the customer. We're doing more of the systems integration like work. Teams room. Yeah, like Teams room. Yeah, like you don't have to speak we can, Yeah, we can do the multi-vendor integration for them. We can test it out within our labs. That's one thing a lot of customers will come to us for is, hey, I want to look at these three vendors integrated Traditional Cisco might have just been that own world, but we can put all the different players together, test it out, validate the design and the architecture, uh, run it through our labs, and you know, really help customers kind of accelerate the deployment of it. So I think it's good for us. Yeah, I would think so, yeah. And then how are you helping customers think through where to start their AI projects? Because the, the world of what you could do is this big, yes. but nobody's going to do this day one, right? Yeah, we, we've got a methodology uh, around Studio Foundry Factor. It's really around helping them figure out what they want to do with AI. How do you build those use cases? How do you want to build that? Is, are you building on-prem? Are you buying in the cloud? Are you kind of hybridizing that? And then how do you get that, that flywheel effect of, you got the first use case, how do you get to the second and third? And 
you're, you're, st you're reducing the cost and then you're starting to accelerate a lot of the value you're getting from, AI, from AI. So um, that methodology really resonates with a lot of our customers because they might come in and well, well, we already have some use cases, but we want to figure out how to build it faster. Or we're really at the front end of, we don't know what we want to do, but we have to do AI, where do we start? So we can really meet the customer wherever they're at in that journey right now. It's, it's really been helpful for us. I think the key is really defining, help them define use cases uh, to show the value of AI, right? That's been the biggest problem. Everybody had their own science projects already going around the AI, but now is the time like, okay, now what do we do this? How do we productize this? And that's the biggest problem. And are you finding that um, the ROI is tied up in cost reduction or are they looking at it as productivity improvement? All Are you seeing it? Yes. All the above. Okay, yeah. 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 We're doing a lot on the workforce AI side of the house around how do you get your end users to use it, but like what is the value of using it? Obviously, the productivity gains is a big one, but measuring productivity sometimes, just because you save two hours writing emails, did you do more with those two hours or did you go watch Netflix? Like it's, yeah, I went it's for figuring, a bike ride. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> going for a bike ride. Um, so, yeah, there's that component to it. The other thing that we're doing a lot of now, and this is what we're talking about at Cisco Live, is around our AI proving ground. So within yes. the ATC, we now have what we call the AI proving ground where customers can come test out these AI workloads within our lab. So it's the infrastructure, testing out new use cases, learning about how are all the different vendors starting to approach us. I mean, think about the AI game these days. Like, it changes every day at yeah. this point. And, trying to stay on top of this is really difficult for clients, and so they're coming to us to understand a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. everyone's got to validate the solutions. And everyone's got to validate the yeah. solutions. As well, we are constantly putting out research reports around this, just to try to put it out as quickly as we can to keep customers up to date. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say another benefit is also we are reducing that initial cycle and the cost of that cycle yeah. for a customer to define a use case and see value right off the bat, and then we can move on uh, to the next phase. All right. Um, so we got more AI, lots more of innovation, AI. and uh, is it fair to say you're more excited about Cisco than you have been? And this was good. Yeah, yeah. This was inspiring. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's the feedback I've had from other partners yeah. and, and a customers. A lot of energy coming out yeah. of this. Yeah. Week. Well, that's yeah, good. It's good. All right. Anything else you guys want to add? No, it's always great to see you. Yeah. I, we don't well, see you enough these days. Yeah. Well, I'll see you partner somewhere. Oh, yeah, I'll see you in two months. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Webex one as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, then you're gonna get sick of me. So, <laughs> all right. So on behalf of Yvonne Wintersteiger and Joe Berger from WWT, I'm ZS Caravalla from ZK Research. And thanks for watching. Uh, hit the uh, give us a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZK.